now, sketch number 241. Daddy knows different. It's another evening at the Emerson home, and look who's doing the dishes. Who? Hi, Dad. Hi, Rusty. Dishes, huh? Well, gee, it's a tough job, but fortunately, your mother and I have you to do it. Whoops, sorry, Dad, but the dishes were soapy. Huh. Hey, Dad, how about an automatic dishwasher, huh? What? And take away all this fun? Come on, Rusty. What are sons for but mowing the lawn and doing the dishes? Oh, yeah. yeah. Gee, Dad, then how about a raise in my allowance, huh? Your allowance? Well, what am I paying you now, Rusty? Two dollars a week. Two dollars a week. Well, let's see. I'll give you a chance to show some initiative here. You say you're getting two dollars a week. Mm-hmm. I'll pay you 25 cents a day. Now, think how that could add up. Gee, Dad, you know how you're always saying that I should use the principles of mathematics and that I might become rich one day? Uh, right. So, uh, what about that 25 cents a day? No deal, Dad. Oh, is it too good of an offer for you, Rusty? You're trying to fool me again, aren't you, Dad? Because there's seven days in a week, and seven quarters is one dollar and seventy-five cents. I already get two dollars, Dad. That's no deal. Oh, uh, Rusty, I tried to put one past you, and I just couldn't do it. Good boy. But I've got an idea, Dad. Maybe you'd like to use paper plates. No, nah, they're too hard to dry. How about if you stop paying me my allowance altogether, huh? No more allowance? Well, gee, I like the idea of that so far, Rusty. I mean, somebody's got to wash the dishes, right? Right. And you are the, the king of dishwashing. Then how about if you pay me each month to wash the dishes, Dad? Wait a second, wait a second. You trying to sneak a raise by the old guy? <laughs> me? Would I do that, Dad? Look, I'll make it easy. Let's say there's 30 days in a month. How about if I charge you a penny for the first day, two cents for the second, four cents for the third, eight cents for the fourth, and so on and so on? Or... Or? Or $15 flat. $15? Oh, son, that's almost double what I'm paying you now. I mean, figure four weeks in a month times $2 per week, that's four times two, $8 versus 15? No, no, no. Or you could do the other, Dad. Pay me a penny the first day, double that amount, and keep doubling it each day for 30 days. Well, son, you know, you're a beautiful person, but there's no way I can pay you $15 a month. No, I think we'll go with that doubling idea. Great! I don't know what you're so excited about. Doesn't sound like a very good offer to me. I mean, think about it. How much could I possibly end up paying you? Take a look at this. Day one, one cent. Day two, two cents. Day three, four cents, eight cents. 16 cents, 32 cents, 64 cents. Now, I figure 10, 12 dollars maximum for the whole month. You're gonna end up owing me a lot more than that, Dad. Oh, no, Rusty, I figure the most I'll have to shell out is 14 bucks. Why, how much you figure I'm gonna owe you? For a 30-day month, you'd owe me $10,737,418.23. Really? I'd like that in small bills, please, Dad. Sorry, son, I must have blacked out there. I thought for a second you said something about $10 million. I did, Dad. What? That's ridiculous, son. That's <laughs> mathematics, Dad. Oh, gee, son, how did you arrive at such a large figure? I mean, on uh, day seven, it was only 64 cents. Well, Dad, I started small, but I thought big. If you take a penny and double it, and then double that amount, it might look small in the beginning. But after a while, it mounts up. Well, I'll say. On the last day of a 30-day month, the amount for just one day would have finally doubled to well over $5 million. Then, of course, you'd have to add up the other days. Well, son, you know, of course, so we're going to have to renegotiate this, otherwise I'm going to have to get a couple extra jobs just to pay you. Well, gee, Dad, I've got an idea. Hmm? Why don't you strike up the same deal with Mom? Have her pay you a penny the first day you take out the trash, then two cents the second day, and so on and so on. Well, that sounds good, Rusty, but uh, where's Mom going to get the money to pay me? From me. She should have the money. She's charging me to make my bed. A penny the first day, two cents the second day, and so on and so on, Dad. I see. So I pay you, you pay Mom, and Mom pays me, and we're all even. That's sensational, Rusty. Oh, dear, it looks like I won't have to get that extra job after all. <laughs> no, Dad, not like that. Like this. That's what I did, Rusty. No, no, son, I have it right. Look, I know what I'm doing. You just watch me carefully. Like this. Ready? 
Beautiful, huh? I can see myself. It may sound silly, but this man has a problem with his apples. Let's see if he can solve it. Well, I'm a pretty smart cat, and I know they say that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Mm. But you gotta help the doc, is what it's about. Got a bad apple problem, can't figure it out. Got an apple school job at the bakery, peeling apples for the dude who makes the pies, you see. Well, I can peel 40 apples in an hour flat, but this chick named Maria can do double that. I think I see the problem, I know what you mean. Maria, son of number on your self-esteem. You consume an apple in me, you're awful and sore. You feel these all the feeling is right. Afternoon, the boss said, I need 360 apples soon. I said, I can peel 40 in an hour, fine. But 360 is gonna take me nine. Maria pops up, starts to laugh, says, I can do the job in only four and a half. The boss says, kids, give my ears a break. If you do the job together, how long is it gonna take? If we do the job together, how long is it gonna take? I think I see the problem. You're ten foot higher. You're terrified her apple skills are gonna get you fired. What I can feel, Maria can do 80, so together we got 120 apples in our one hour shot. He needs 360, that isn't enough! Wait a minute, Doc, I'm working out this stuff. 120 in one, 360 in what? But that's several times as many as the apples you've got. Three times as many apples, three times as long. Three times as many hours if we're going strong. So take one hour, look at five by three, and that's three hours of working for Maria and me. I think I see the problem, but look at the floor. Solve my problem. See you later, Doc. But I did talk to the writers. And what did they say? They said it would be wrong to change your intro into warm and wonderful game show host. But why? They said because you weren't warm and wonderful. What the heck do they mean? I'm not warm and... <laughs> and now, time again for America's favorite mathematical game show. But who's counting? And here's America's only non-warm and wonderful game show host. What's it? Monte Carlo. <laughs> Special hello to all you Nielsen families out there. Welcome to the Who's Counting. Now, let's be the folks who are going to play along with us today. The loving couple is... Now, let's meet your opponents who are... 
Um, like, my name's, uh, Sunny Mead. And I'm Sunshine. What do you do? We make our own granola. Uh, and like, I'd like to say hi to our two offsprings, uh, Sunshine and Cinnamon. Hello? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful! You all know how to play the game? <laughs> but first, let's meet that fantabulous Wheeler Dealer, the soon-to-be star of her own TV series, Amber Jeanette! Oh, yeah. Here's how you play the game today. We'll choose six digits at random, one at a time. Your job is to make two three-digit numbers. When you're finished, add them up, and whichever team has the largest sum wins a fantabulous prize. Remember, once you place a digit on your board, you can. And of course, there will be a bonus prize for the largest possible sum. You folks at home, get pen and paper ready so you can play along with us. Here we go with the first digit. calculators, courtesy Cumulus Calculators. Cumulus, the calculator's calculator. Okay, everybody, time's up. Number, please. <laughs> uh, we have uh, you know, one, seven, six, three, one thousand seven hundred sixty three. And said, very well. Okay, and over here, the number is? Well, Monty, I'd like to allow my friend and mate to read our number. Like 1,763 also. On the photo! Two pro ties and two bonus prizes! Oh, boy. Is everyone ready for the second round? Yeah. Okay, now are you ready? Let's start! Okay, Amber, give that wheel rotation! <laughs> Now, by the way, for all of you who have written in inquiring about Amber's hairdo, her hairdresser is Anthony, hairdresser to the stars. Okay. Number three. Monty, je sais pas, c'est pas trop bon. 1,200. Uh, 1,215. Okay, let's see what the Meads came up with. Uh, Your sum is? Well, like Monty, I'd like to announce that we have the very beautiful number. It's 1,575. 1,575. Very good. Looks like you won this round. Now, the best possible sum is 1,575. 
93. Oh. Well, the Meads win the game. Oh, they I win. They win a flip fed mongoose. Oh! <laughs> Second prize over here goes to them the Barbaric. An air cooled horse. Because it's And both couples win a special bonus prize. Autograph picture of Amber Jeanette. Well, congratulations. Mrs. Tuttle doesn't know she's on our hidden camera. Oh, I've got a headache. It starts at the top of my head, roller skates to my forehead, then dribbles down my nose, hangs a louis to my left earlobe, and then break dances down my neck. It sounds like a data headache. I have a data headache. Too much information on her monthly budget and no way to organize it. Oh, sure. I love numbers and figures, but sometimes they just give me a headache. If only I could see how they relate to each other. Will you try a bar graph? A bar graph? A quick, easy way to organize and display data. I'll try it. Bar graph. Just one of the many tables, charts, and graphs available to you anytime, anywhere. When in doubt, chart it out. My headache's gone, and now I can see what my monthly budget looks like. Thank you, Bar Graph. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was 2.43 p.m. and baseball fever grips Los Angeles. The Dodgers had just dropped a pair to the Cubs in a peach of a twin bill. We were working the day watch out of MathNet, trying to solve the disappearance of rock star Steve Stringbean. We were having very little luck and were getting discouraged, but we knew, like true problem solvers, we had to keep plugging. My partner is George Frankly. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We decided to look at the last scene from yesterday's show to see if this might help. What I still can't figure out is, why he's singing off key? Well, he may just be nervous. Can't be much fun. Being kidnapped, I mean. George, get the lab working on our eyes problem. Right. That's it! Steve Stringbean is singing the kidnapper's telephone number. Rimshot, you were right all along. Steve was trying to communicate with us. We should have thought of it. Every button on a touchtone telephone produces a musical note. Sing the notes, Rimshot. George, you find each note on the phone. Sure. Then, when we've got the number, the phone company will be able to search its database, just like Debbie did when she got the information about the cars. The phone company will use its computer to search the number and match it up with an address. We'll know where the kidnappers are calling from. And the rest is like history, man. Here's the first tone. F. It's a five, man. So the first three numbers are fives. Here's the next one. E flat. Seven. In no time, George and Rimshot had pinpointed the telephone number as 555-7657. We were getting closer. George called the phone company and asked them to do their database search for the address. Thank you. Interesting, Kate. About the number, I mean. There are three area codes in the greater Los Angeles area. That's right, George. So? Our number shows up on two of them. 1075 Wellworth Street and 313 Glockenspiel Way. How are we going to know which is the right one? I've got an idea, George. Remember the antique cars? Antique cars? Yeah, like old, you know. Rumble seats, running boards, and good mileage. I'll ask Debbie to use her computer and see if any of those cars are registered at either of these two addresses. I'm, like, impressed, man. Pretty hip, huh, Daddy-o? But I'm bum, man. I've used the Department of Motor Vehicles databank, mathematicians, and here's what I've got. 
A man named John Phillips Lusa, who owns a 1926 Model T, has that phone number. And his address is 313 Glockenspiel Way. He's got to be our man. Let's roll. 440-450-21. The tires fit, Kate. Good afternoon, sir. Monday, MathNet. Frankly, MathNet. Rimshot, hanging out. How may I help you, I wonder? We're investigating a missing persons case, and we think you can help us. Oh, I don't think so. I haven't been missing for weeks. Mind if we come in? In the house? Yes, sir. Not at all. Once we were in the house, George informed the man of his rights. Are you John Phillips Luza, and do you own that car outside? Yes. Yes what? Yes, sir. Yes to which question? Yes to both questions. Yes. Yes. I am John Phillips Luza, and I do own that car out front. Want to make something of it? <laughs> uh, Mr. Luza, did you write this music? Yes, I did. Three yeses in a row. Yes to my name, yes to the car, and yes to the music. Oh, when you're hot, you're hot. Yes, sir. I wonder if you know who Steve Stringbean is. Yes, I know who he is. And yes, I did see him last August 16th at the Hollywood Bowl. You lucky dog. Martha and I couldn't even get tickets. We have reason to believe that you might know his present whereabouts. Do you like music, son? It's my life, man. Mine too, Pops. You like marches? I can leave them or leave them. Here's one I just finished. Stars and stripes occasionally. Here's another. March into the River Kwai. What's that one? That? Oh, that's the St. Louis Blues March. I think Glenn Miller already did it, man. Oh, really? Here's one of my favorites. Seventy-five trombone bones is what you have. If you march down the field, you can blow them. Mr. Lusa, we know you kidnapped Steve Stringbean. Where is he, Mr. Lusa? In the other room. for the inquiry. He had us worried, Steve, didn't he, George? Can I have your autograph, Floss? Did you meet my accomplice? How do you do? I'm Floyd Tyrone, <laughs> drum major. Mr. Lusa, we have some more questions for you. Let's go. Mr. Lusa, would you mind telling us what this is all about? Why did you kidnap Steve Stringbean? I wanted him to perform my material. I just knew if the public could hear my march, played by Steve Stringbean, that I'd have the fame that eluded me and Floyd all our lives. Almost all our lives. I made honor roll in seventh grade. Mm. Why did you ask for such an unusual ransom? $104,020. That's what it cost to rent the University of Michigan football stadium, including the marching band. You wanted your music to be performed by the Wolverine marching band? Was Steve fronting the group? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Is that big or what? And I was going to lead the band up and down on the field. Did you go to school at the University of Michigan? No, I flunked out my freshman year. I'm sorry. Had to finish up at Michigan State, but I've always been partial to the big blue band. Mr. Lusa, what you've done is, well... Not nice? Worse. Rotten? Illegal. Illegal. I was afraid you were going to say that. Once again, working hand in glove with the Los Angeles Police Department, justice has been served. Hi. I'm glad we found you before the parade, Steve. So am I. Sorry you were put to so much trouble. 
Me too, man. Well, it wasn't a total waste. I did get some work done. Please do what these people say. I knew you were falling arches. Please do what these people say. Can't stand here in marches. <laughs> Well, partner, looks like we've solved another one. Except for one thing. What's that? I didn't get his autograph, and Martha's going to be really ticked off. Aww. <laughs> Both John Phillips Lusa and Floyd Tyrone were convicted of stealing a rock musician and sentenced to an appropriate number of years away from society and the University of Michigan marching band.